Hey, Weather Geeks, it's Tuesday, and it feels like January, of course, this afternoon. Let's uh, get right to it. Lots to talk about again today. First of all, the list of coldest high temperatures on record in Youngstown in the month of November. We, of course, are very close to the top of this list this afternoon. The coldest November day ever was uh, November 30th, 1976, with a high temperature of only 17 that day. That was the last day of the month. We're still kind of in the heart of November. It's early in the season for this kind of stuff. So, uh, of course, that's why it's a major weather story, not only here, but nationally as well. Some other cold days. We had three days where we reached 19 for high, uh, 1958, 1950, 1933. Most recently, yeah, last year, uh, we had a day in November where the high was only 23 degrees. Well, what about this afternoon? These are the readings at 2 o'clock p.m., 16, the temperature at the Youngstown Warren Airport. Now, we'll, wa we'll uh, wait for the official climate report to uh, come out later this afternoon from the National Weather Service to see if we snuck up to 17 between hourly observations. And we, we still might get there right on the nose at 3 o'clock. That remains to be seen. But uh, the possibility is there, at least, that we are going to tie or even break the record for the coldest November high temperature on record in Youngstown. It is just, yeah, remarkably, remarkably cold. And you zoom out, let me uh, take off the uh, satellite here. You zoom out and you uh, you see lots and lots of pure Arctic air settled across the Great Lakes and uh, the Ohio Valley as well. And this is going nowhere in a hurry, of course. So we're expecting below average temperatures to stick around through the end of the week, although the air mass will become progressively less harsh as we go through time. All of a sudden, 30 sounds balmy when we've got these kinds of, uh, of temperatures. All right, let's uh, talk about the lake effect. And this has just been remarkable. Now, this happens from time to time. This is not unheard of, but but still just remarkable. The, the just fire hose of snow aimed right at what they call the south towns of Buffalo, the essentially the southern suburbs of Buffalo. Some places already over three feet, heading towards four feet, Probably some places are already at four feet. And before all was said and done, you know, 70 inches, almost six feet of snow, pretty likely somewhere in through here, uh, uh, south of Buffalo, heading down towards Dunkirk, New York. It's, it's amazing. You go just north of downtown Buffalo, they have one inch of snow on the ground. And then you go south of Buffalo, and some places already have four plus feet. That's lake effect for you. Uh, it can change enormously over the course of just a couple of miles. Closer to home, the, the edge of this fire hose of lake effect has reached Lake County, Ashtabula County, and this band will continue to wobble. And they're going to get some pretty decent accumulations as far south as Ashtabula, Mentor, and certainly heading over towards Erie, PA, but just not the enormity of the accumulations that they're seeing up in western New York uh, right now. And it's, it's uh, again, it's, it's not going to stop anytime real soon. The only places unscathed by this Arctic outbreak are the desert southwest and parts of California, where it's in the 60s and 70s, and far southern Florida. Look at Orlando, though. Orlando is only at 48 this afternoon. Uh, so you think, oh, Orlando, vacation spot in November. Not today. It's awfully chilly by their standards. But Miami, yeah, still, still, they're doing fine there. They're in the 70s down there. All right, let's talk about the future, because we do have a couple of important things to talk about here. Uh, kind of a nuisance event getting set to track our way tomorrow. And what I mean by nuisance is not a big storm, but perhaps coming at kind of a tough time, uh, you know, maybe for the uh, afternoon commute. So let's bring up our latest NAM model for uh, for tomorrow afternoon. Skip ahead to uh, tomorrow morning. Here's mid morning, and what we have is an Alberta Clipper system coming down out of yeah Alberta, Canada, scooting through the Great Lakes and spreading some light to moderate snows through Michigan, Indiana, and Northwest Ohio by mid morning. As we get into the uh, the afternoon tomorrow. Let's skip ahead to this would be at uh, 4 p.m. Uh, you know, this is going to be mostly light, but occasionally a little bit on the moderate side. And it's coming right before or right as kids are getting out of school and a lot of people are trying to head home from work. And this could really slicken up the roads, I think, in a lot of the Mahoning and Shenango valleys towards the end of the afternoon and early tomorrow evening. Accumulations we'll talk about in a second. Not huge, but just enough probably to cause some problems. And then we'll be dealing with residual snow showers that could you know, add on some late additional accumulations tomorrow night, heading into parts of Thursday as well. So how much snow uh, could we be potentially uh, talking about here? So let me take off my drawing tool. Well, here's the latest uh, SREF, uh, short-range ensemble forecast model. 
Uh, if you've seen my videos or blogs before, you're, you're pretty familiar with this. 21 members of this model. Uh, the, the, the one straggler up here gives us uh, close to three inches. And then we've got a more of a tight cluster down here, somewhere between a half an inch and one and a half inches, with generally the mean or the average being around one inch. This is for the Youngstown Warren Airport uh, tomorrow afternoon heading into tomorrow night. So, of course, that's in southeastern Trumbull. I expect similar conditions throughout Trumbull, Mercer, Mahoning, northern Lawrence. Farther south you are, I suspect amounts are a little lower if you're watching from, oh, say maybe Lisbon or Calcutta, East Liverpool, heading maybe up to Elwood City, Newcastle. You know, half an inch might be a little bit better for you tomorrow, but uh, I think you've got a good shot at seeing an inch or so. Uh, from about 224 on north up into, say, the northern half of our viewing area. So that's something we have to keep in mind. Here's the uh, NAM model uh, accumulations through just 4 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, so it already gives us an inch by 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And then through Thursday morning, a total of maybe an inch and a half, two inches, especially north of I-80. Uh, so there's going to be some residual leftover snow showers Wednesday night, Thursday morning that add on to some of the totals. But I think by tomorrow evening, we got a shot at seeing an inch of snow uh, causing some problems on the roads. By Thursday, the Alberta Clipper, the cold front associated is swung uh, associated with it, I should say, swung east, and boy, the Arctic hounds are going to be out again. It's not going to be as harsh as today, but still cold. So yeah, cold, gusty wind as well. Thursday into Friday, it's not going to be as harsh as today, but still those wind chills will be pretty nasty. Overnight lows will be close to 10 for a couple of nights. We're going to flirt with more record lows at the end of this week and heading into Friday night, Saturday morning. Uh, by Friday evening, snow showers will be winding down, and we'll get a pretty good break then Friday night. Much of Saturday, I think the model's just picking up on maybe some clouds here. Maybe there's a stray shower Saturday. But uh, with this big warm-up that's coming, uh, comes a pretty good chance for rain on Sunday. This is Sunday afternoon, low pressure tracking through Illinois, warm front up here, pretty good slug of rain coming up. And it will be rain, no snow with this, uh, because you know, pretty significant uh, warming trend coming our way. It's going to be windy. So we head into Monday, six days from now, uh, probably more scattered shower activity, but still a gusty wind and still some uh, mild temperatures as well. So let's talk about uh, the long-range trends quickly. This is the upper-level flow. Of course, right now, enormous trough of low pressure, closed-off low-pressure system in southern Canada. Uh, that's going to lift out as we head towards the end of the week, although there's going to be this last little chunk rotating down, giving us the cool weather again Thursday and Friday, or cold weather, I should say. By the weekend, the pattern starts to change. Big troughs coming into the west. See that thing coming into uh, to California and then uh, Arizona, bringing California and parts of the southwest some needed rain. That's going to kind of change the pattern, bringing more troughy uh, weather to the central part of the U.S. That's going to pump up the ridge in the east for a couple of days early next week, giving us the warmth. And then as we head towards uh, the heart of Thanksgiving week, turns like uh, into a colder pattern again. Not as cold as now, but a colder pattern overall for Thanksgiving. Too early to say whether we have precipitation to worry about for the holiday, but certainly uh, the warmth that we're going to have early next week will disappear in time for the holiday in just nine days. It's Thanksgiving in nine days. That's today's weather for Weather Geeks. Thank you for watching, everyone. I'll see you tonight on 21 News at 6 and 11 o'clock.